Among the most important tools for an athlete to succeed are motivation, discipline and the will to do, overcome just about everything. Welcome to another special episode of In Focus. The man we are talking to today has all of these things in abundance. Six-time national champion swimmer, Arjuna Awardee, Olympian, motivator and now an aspiring professional golfer, Mr. Rehan Poncha. Do not switch this one off midway because there is a lot to learn from this conversation. Also, we are bringing a lot of conversations and fun content with a lot of Indian athletes in the upcoming weeks. So do subscribe to the channel. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rehan Poncha. Welcome, sir. Welcome to In Focus, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Sujay. Thank you. Um, let's just get straight into it. There's this national fervor around the Olympics right now. Deservedly so. Let me just add. What do you think of this whole situation that is happening right now? I I think that it's fantastic for Indian sport. Um, I feel that uh, because of social media and uh, the positive way in which it has been used yeah. by people, by sports pages, by apps, by brands to promote our athletes before the Olympics, leading up into the Olympics, through the whole games and even post the Olympics has, is, I can only see positives coming from, you know, all of it uh, for Indian sport in general. Specifically uh, for our athletes, I believe that um, leading again, leading up into the games and during the games, uh, a lot of attention was brought to them and uh, their stories. And I, I can see that uh, while um, it's still around, it's uh, going to take its, of course, natural cause, cause of dropping in yeah. terms of the whole hysteria, euphoria, hype around uh, our, uh, the games. Yeah. But uh, I would like to see that whatever attention has been built up and knowledge has been gained around sports that our general pe- public did not know of maybe uh, yeah. should not be lost and not should be lost completely. So like I said, uh, while I'm really happy that uh, so much attention really has been brought uh, all, mainly because of social media, I think today yeah. to our uh, uh, to our athletes and the games and we celebrated our highest, again, highest medal tally ever. We celebrated it with so much fervor and with so much passion, uh, which was great to see where uh, athletes were really made into heroes through the games. Um, there's always going to be a gradual drop off, like I said, but I hope that this sort of uh, enthusiasm about sport in India uh, stays. You can't expect it to stay uh, at the at the level at, it, at which it was going through the games, but I, I, at least at least maybe a fifty percent. It's wrong to put a number to it, but at least half that whole hype and, and craze about all our sports, yeah. not only one or two sports, but all our sports uh, should stay. And uh, you know, a, a couple of days ago, somebody asked me from the press. Somebody said, uh, "Do you think that uh, there will be a drop off for athletes? Um, yeah. You know, where they may feel demotivated?" And I said, "What has happened is one of the only plus points of going through this uh, pandemic." is that because Olympics got delayed by a year, we yeah. have our Asian Games coming up next year. Yeah. And, uh, and otherwise, it's over a two-year gap. And what happens is, generally, the team that went to Olympics is not even necessarily the team that goes to the next Asian and Commonwealth Games. True. It's a fresh team. But in this case, I think that because it's now one year, a lot of our athletes, from their point of view and from their standpoint, uh, they are so inspired by the games themselves and how they performed that they will take this inspiration and motivation into the Asian and Commonwealth Games. So I see that happening. I see a crossover of a lot of this time's Olympians winning medals at Asian Games. I hope my predictions do come true. So all in all, you know, I think there's a, it's a, there's a very positive atmosphere, a vibe that has been created around uh, the Olympic Games that I really, really hope um, sustains itself for the next two or three years at least. I, I really hope so. And personally speaking, I think um, a big challenge is coming up maybe around later in September, September 19th, Correct. 20th, when IPL is scheduled to start and then the T20 World Cup is scheduled to start. That is where Indians will be challenged the most in this particular department. 
Right, right. You know, I'll I'll tell you what. You know, I've always I've have several friends, I have close friends who are cricketers, and I've never really felt that cricket gets. Uh, of course, cricket does sometimes get too much attention. Yeah. But uh, what I feel is that cricket can still get the attention that it deserves or doesn't deserve. That's fine. But let's bring other sports up to that. You know, that sort of uh, uh, attention as well. Let's bring them up to a point where people are noticing. and knowing our athletes and their stories which is what your platform is also uh, aspiring to do um, so if if the ipl is on if the world cup is on maybe i'll watch it maybe i won't i may get excited about a couple of the matches and that's fine but at the same time it is also my responsibility as a citizen and as an athlete past or present to also know what's going on with uh, our olympic athletes mm-hmm. so all our athletes can across the board can be celebrated can be felicitated can be you know honored and inspired or motivated in different yeah. ways to sustain themselves over the next couple of years having been an olympian yourself in the 2008 games yes what do you think changed from the last few to this one specifically um i think um three words access to knowledge access to information and better access to information and uh, i'll elaborate a bit uh, when when i uh, when i prepared for the 2008 games uh, i trained with uh, the best one and both of the best coaches in the country through my career both in bangalore leading up to that point i had the good fortune of being also given a couple of scholarships uh, to train abroad um, so the access that i had to good knowledge was uh, was quite vast in comparison to uh, the majority of other indian swimmers yeah so there were a couple of us who had this access who eventually did go on to turning olympian and uh, getting arjuna awards and doing really well internationally what has changed today is that more and more athletes such like myself from 2008 have access to great coaches have yeah. access to better nutrition have ac- access to better sports psychologists sports physios trainers yeah and also a uh, competition where you're racing against the best in the world mm. or you're training also with the best in the world yeah. so if you're training in india you still have a combination of a great indian mind who's a coach and maybe a foreign coach plus his whole team of yeah. like i said trainers physiotherapists sports psychologists and the like and that access is so much more to many many athletes today so you in 2008 i would say for example athletes not swimmers but the athletics team or the hockey team would ne- never have had this sort of exposure or knowledge that they could gain from so many people who are supporting their goal of winning medals or making finals at the olympics yeah and that is one of the biggest things that has changed even in 2008 a lot of the research that i did for example as an olympian who was representing in india for over you know a decade yeah. was very minimal compared to what athletes have today and that's why records are broken because you 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 get better as a sporting nation and you get better you learn more and more and more but um, uh, this again would only have been possible because a lot of the support system that athletes have today are young young people and they are young young people who understand the sport better there are a few of my friends understand several sports better there are a few of my friends who are part of the tops scheme that is supporting athletes has been have you know they give uh, it's a government scheme they're giving yeah. out scholarships to athletes and been supporting their journey over the last 4 or 5 years and again these are young people who understand what it takes to become a champion who understand what it takes to turn into an olympian who are planning for, uh, to you know steps to build up that athlete to the point of being world class okay. so when i talk about i'm just giving you an example when i talk about that top scheme or uh, you you look at the team on instagram celebrating neeraj's gold medal or just celebrating a final of yeah. any of our athletes they are all people who i would say okay this person if he had the resources could also have been a, an olympian true but he need not it may not be resources may not even be he may not have the talent to do it but he's also working back end it's 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 similar to saying that it's it's 
not saying but it's similar to uh, making a great movie where uh, you 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 take you, you decide to make a movie in one month you bring on a, a crappy script writer and a director and a cinematographer and you know what you're going to get at the end of it but if you work on that movie and you work on the script for two years and then you sit down with your director and your actors for another year and you spend three or four years to before you actually hit the clapboard and you say yeah. okay let's film in preparation to make that great movie it turns out to be a great movie. Sure. so i feel that uh, our preparation that our athletes have undergone leading up to this olympics is not one year old yeah. they have been, they have been built over the last eight years whether it's come from government scholarships or it's come from more attention from corporates in terms of sponsorships um it's what's been a huge uh, reason for our athletes doing well all credit to them all credit to their hard work and their determination and everything that goes into making a champion you can have all the money in the world but if you don't have the at- right attitude and the right work ethic you're never going to make it this was there during my time like i said for me but in a small way for very few people yeah. today it's it's just more and when you ask me what would you like to see as a change in indian sport i would say just this into 100 you know it's yeah. it's that's the best way i think i can yeah. uh, put it very very fair and that that would be a very good situation to be in as a sporting nation because like you were saying earlier yes i think india is big enough for every sport to coexist it doesn't yes. need to be like okay this one needs to go down for the others to rise it absolutely india is a big enough nation for that absolutely um, speaking of your journey sir right swimming started mainly because of you wanted to take care of a certain health issue and how right. how did that then become a passion and then ultimately a profession okay so um uh, like, as clearly you've done uh, your research and you understood how i started swimming but i'll just take it uh, i think ever since i can remember so jay i've been extremely competitive um whether it was uh, and and i always wanted to be better at what i did and this is a this is something that have i have grown up with ever like i said from the age of 7 or 8 so whether you had to put me in a swimming pool or you would have even put me on a uh, you know in any other sport given me a tennis racket in my hand or a golf club in my hand or uh, whether or not i would eventually get to being great at the sport is always an unknown quantity yeah. but the will to be the best the will to be competitive the will to want to feel the rush of winning and uh, setting goals and chasing them has always been part of my okay. being has been always part of my nature so when i started swimming and while i was introduced to it Uh, like you said for uh, therapeutic reasons um i decided that i have to be good at it and uh, not i i i've said this on a few you know corporate shows and shows such as yours that uh, in school when i was uh, around 8 8 or 9 years old uh, we used to have regular uh, races uh, on sports day you know running the 100 meter 200 meter and um, there used to be selection trials to race those you know pre yeah. leading up into that and i was a quite a terrible athlete which yeah. and in those days athlete me- meant in school how fast you can run yeah. and uh, that really you know took a toll on my own self confidence so because i was literally dead last in every time that 100 meter trial would happen okay. not great on my feet not fast okay. so i had you know decided for myself that i have to find something that uh, one i enjoy doing and enjoy uh, training at yeah. and two i have to find something where i can tell myself not the world but tell myself that i am the best at it. and i am the best at it and i'm a, and, and and eventually uh, because i was nine and i was passionate and i was aggressive at nine as we all are i told yeah. myself that i have to be a better sw- a swimmer than any other athlete that came out of the same mary school okay. you know so that is how a 9 year old's mind thought but as i got older the reason this became a career and it was always a passion for me is yeah. that from a very young age i i had this in me then and and i find it quite 
insane that uh, today's sports psychologists they teach athletes this but at the age of 9 i was already looking for it where i was looking for little things within my sport that i truly loved so for example i and this feeling never went away for 20 years where when i was in form when i was whether i was 8 years old i was 27 years old i loved the sound that my arms made when they entered the water that was something that i just absolutely loved i loved the feeling of um, training a whole season and then resting and feeling like your muscles are brand new and then going yeah. out and racing literally feeling like you're floating on water that's a feeling that is quite indescribable but i have uh, you have a so there's no point in attempting to do it but it's a feeling of being rested recovered from the years work and then being so sharp that you're flying rather than swimming mm-hmm. so these are just examples of little nuances from my sport that um, that i made an effort to fall in love with it's not that it came to me naturally okay. and uh, when i speak to kids today and they you know so many children are lost they don't know what yeah. they want to do so you know i can turn out and say that at 7 i didn't know what i wanted to do either but because swimming was given to me as a sport i made the effort to find certain triggers that i loved from the sport True. and that's what i tell them to do when they feel uninspired by something that they are doing you have to do that because otherwise what happens is on your bad days yeah you cannot sustain hard work you know with and 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 if if all i've said converts to you telling me that wow you're so passionate about your sport great but uh, uh, but that's what it was and and i very quickly found out that i love many elements of swimming and oh, above all else i love competition uh, i thrive on setting goals and chasing them down which is why my second sport which you will probably come to later golf after achieving whatever i did in swimming golf so um, there's a quote i'll end this answer with a quote there's a quote that uh, i i use in my talk it's called success is never final learning never ends and uh, it's something i truly believe in that you will you you will always be successful and you will always be great at what you do if you okay, you you have the ability to learn and never lose the ability to constantly learn no matter how good you get yeah at the, at your sport or anything you do in life so that that is something that's very important and i feel a lot of people forget that somewhere along the journey like yes you need to keep growing you need to keep learning and keep absolutely bettering okay. yourself absolutely so you you spoken about the the talk that you gave um in a, in in a few of your talks you've mentioned how the path to becoming a professional athlete uh, a professional swimmer yes. was riddled with challenges a lot of them at times right if you could shed light on some of them and how you overcame that aspect okay so uh, you know i, I could talk about uh, i mean if you are talking about a 20 year career oh. I, I, this is too late but i'll pull out three things okay because i think that the stories around those uh three things are important uh, for people to listen to because when when people uh, listen to a successful athlete or hear of a success story like you just said it's very important that they understand what goes into uh, getting over the hurdles and that there are more hurdles than successes yeah this is the first thing i want to say that you have to accept when you're an athlete or when you're anybody for that matter that there are always going to be more hurdles than successes having said that my one of my biggest challenges that i faced as a as a swimmer was uh, asthma and um, exercise induced asthma where uh, two things would happen uh, one is in cold water my windpipe would spasm and under uh, yeah literally just tighten up and under heavy exertion it wouldn't i would find it very hard to breathe and uh, the second challenge for me within that whole framework of air and lungs was that at 16 uh, sorry at 22 uh, i found out that i had an allergic reaction to an excess of chlorine in the pool so yeah so uh, this is uh, when you talk about access to information and you talk about uh, maybe if we had better access when i was 7 i may have chosen 
another spot if these were the two conditions that i was dealing with but you know everything happens for the best clearly it did and uh, so in terms of physically i feel that managing my air in okay. a spot where air is everything uh, okay. was one of my greatest challenges but it was also one of the most interesting things that i had to in my sport okay. while and i'll tell you why because while everybody else was worried about when their arms would shut shut down in a race or when their legs would shut down or you know physically how fit they would be for that race i never had those fears because i was a hard worker and i was a very smart worker you know where i i knew exactly how to put together my race okay. so that i would be uh, you know doing as best as my body could okay. but where i had to work around the challenge was managing sorry managing my oxygen yeah so it's breathing and it's how you breathe how many breaths you take from lap to lap to lap and uh, it, it's it's literally like uh, the best way i could put it is you you got 16 kilometers to the pump mm-hmm. and your the needle of your car is dropping and you've got to figure out at what gear and at what speed you're going to be most economical Oh, wow so yeah so i mean and, and i'm not trying to make that it a bigger challenge than it actually was for high because it was actually this it is a and huge challenge so it is a huge challenge again absolutely and i and i and i started complaining about it when i was 13 and 14 years old uh, in bangalore which has a very high content of coal in india which is what triggered yeah. the whole thing and everybody talked about how my posture could have been could be better and that you know that's what helps with opening up the lungs but it took us 9 uh, years to go to australia and uh, race in australia to qualify for the beijing olympics mm-hmm. where an australian doctor in that swimming pool said to us and my coach get him tested for asthma get him tested for an allergic reaction to chemicals in the pool yeah. and in one month i was on medication for both and 3 months later i qualified for the olympics so uh, you know and i qualified in a swimming pool that was ozonized which means that there are no chemicals in those yeah. pools so yeah. at 22 i learned that if i need to race best internationally i need to choose swim tournaments where swimming pools are o- have ozonizers and not chemicals in them wow. so it's literally like saying that fedra to up his ranking is not going to constantly play on a clay court he yeah. is going to want to play on grass but we don't have that luxury we train in uh, pools that have chemicals and uh, you know and and again what's important here is that i never made this an excuse okay the first thing i said when i started giving you this answer is it was the most interesting yeah. part of my journey yeah. so it's how i looked at it i never looked at it at wow he has so much air my competitor on the left and right of me have unlimited oxygen and i have to why do i have to manage it you know i can tell you 10 stories of 10 athletes in the world today who have something that is wrong with them physically yeah. and that's i think one of the biggest reasons why they do become the greatest because they learn to overcome those challenges that they are mm-hmm. faced with you know so that this was i think my greatest challenge physically and if i were to mention just one big event for you it was the 2004 uh, athens olympics yeah. i was 16 years old i was the best in the country so we were told that i should attempt to qualify for the olympics and i trained in australia for 6 months extremely hard but when it came time to qualifying i was 16 i was a teenager not fully mature yeah. i was still national champion in india but i was not fully mature to to overcome the stress of that moment and i missed the time and yeah. i think for me at 16 that was a very uh, you know it was a turning factor in my career where i had two choices one is to maybe to swim another couple of years in india continue being uh, you know a, a asian games finalist and a, a medalist in several international events and doing very well for myself already or pushing to attempt and try again yeah. and uh, the whole idea of trying again from 2004 to 2008 so when i eventually qualified was a huge challenge that i did have the courage i think to to take up uh, because i felt that uh, if i give up now uh, and stop i'll never know if i could have become an olympian so uh, uh, this was this was uh, the, the it wasn't the greatest in in 2000 i would say that 2004 it was the greatest disappointment of my career which was the reason for the greatest achievement of my career in 2008 that's how i'd like to put it. no that's that's a 
such a beautiful sentiment sir and like you were saying earlier i feel the athletes who reached the top in any sport or any other profession also not just athletes i think those are the people who avoid asking that one question why always me which you you yeah. did which you Absolutely. did with aplomb yes. so and that is something that deserves a lot of applause you know i just add add to this bit i read the other day that kobe bryant missed i think 14000 something free throws in his career yeah i just read it on social media i don't know how true it is but i'm guessing they did miss so much if they shot so much and yeah. uh, and and basically it was to tell people to a- learn to accept hurdles and learn to accept defeat because that's the only way. you learn see you, my coach just told me this today at the golf course i he said how was your day i said not great today wasn't a great day he saying there's always going to be so much more you'll learn from a bad day than from a good day true true and i'm already my mind is on overdrive for tomorrow morning once this gets done i'm going to go back to my drills and figure out what i can do better but if i had got off the golf course playing a great round for example i would have come home i would have chilled out and listened to music and i would have gone to sleep you know so there's so much yeah. more that you if you have the 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 right mindset and the right attitude there's so much more you can learn from a hurdle or a sacri- or a, or a challenge or a or a loss than you can from a win you you mentioned golf just now and i think that's a very yeah. like good part of the journey so far how right. did golf come about i mean you were deep into swimming when golf right. you, you started taking up golf and then now right. you're on your way to becoming a pro hopefully i uh, <laughs> i hope so too so thank you so how, how, how did that happen uh, it see it was 2012 i to, i had finished a tournament in rome and i told my coach i wanted an extended break i i, I it was the first time in uh, my entire career which was two decades long that i i told my coach that i am going to book a one way ticket uh, from bangalore to bombay and i am not telling you when i am coming back you know it was the first time in 20 years that i did that uh, i i told him that i needed a break and he respected that obviously um i was 26 or 27 at the time and i said that uh, more than my body my mind needed a break from com- competitive sport and uh, having said that i think my body did too because the longest break i have ever taken in 20 years of swimming was 3 uh, weeks and that was only because i had an injury in my ribs you know intercostal muscle tear otherwise my regular holidays would be 4 days long or 5 days long okay. so uh, i desperately needed a break and i took it uh, one week into th- i for the first week to 10 days i really enjoyed my freedom my uh, time off um but uh, very very quickly um i would find myself waking up mornings uh, because you we've got our internal body clock alarm that wakes us up so 4:58 am was my time for over 10 years and uh, i started i would wake up in darkness and then realize that i don't have swim practice to go to anymore okay. and uh, and it it wasn't a bad feeling it was just a feeling of uh, emptiness in a way a feeling of uh want and and very quickly because of like i said my nature i want started to find ways to fill that void and uh, how do you do that you can't uh, join a family business because that's not going to uh, you know fill fill that emptiness so luckily for me uh, we were a, a family friend uh, to just gave me an idea that we are members of a golf club in bombay that i incidentally learned to swim at when i was 7 years old we um he said why don't you 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 we have the facility why just go pass your time go spend two or three hours learn a new hobby it's a great sport he was playing it so he said just do it he gave me 7 9 and he said go out there and just do it now um, me being me took that 7 9 to the course uh, didn't learn on my own but made sure i found a coach that taught it to me well and um, on the 10th day of golf uh, i was walking out with water and a carbohydrate drink and literally like i was going to swim practice and my mom stopped yeah. me and said what are you doing it's 7 in the morning go back to bed and i said no i have, now i have to learn how to hit a 7 iron well so that's one club and uh, and this was uh, i think about 8 years ago and i really really made an effort to hit that seven i well and it's not like i was playing matches with pros or i was doing any of that i would go to the range i would buy 100 or 150 golf balls and i would just keep hitting targets but for me 
uh, one of the earliest things my coach told me was, he said, when you finally hit that golf ball the way it's supposed to be hit, it'll be a feeling like no other. And you know what he said triggered the same love that I had for the best that I drew from my swimming. Yeah. And that's when I, I knew that this has got to be a big part of the next two, 20 years of my life because yeah. I found it. Now, what have I found? I have not found greatness. I have not found the Olympics. I have not found tournament trophies. But I have found in my search to fill this emptiness, I have found a trigger that literally wakes me up in the morning. Yeah. And uh, so I went back and I went back and I went back again. And before I knew it, I was working with uh, some of the best coaches in, in Dubai who train some of the best players in the world. And now I'm working eight years now with a coach in Pune who is also training number one, four and seven on the amateur national circuit. I'm part of that team. And I believe that over the next year, I'm going to be good enough to hopefully compete on the amateur national circuit. So, um, so I've just fast forwarded eight years for you. But how did it come about? This is exactly how it did. I found a sport and because I found a sport, I so I don't know how to play a sport for fun, you know, and, and in, 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 in many ways, I feel that it's not a good thing because, uh, 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 because when you, when you go through 20 years of sport as a child, also with so much pressure, uh, you, you, you sort of get jaded and you lose the ability to enjoy it like a child. Yeah. If you understand, you know, get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like the best example is that holidays when everybody else is playing around in the swimming pool. I don't, I don't understand how to. I don't know how to get into a swimming pool and splash around and have fun. It's, I can try, but I'd be faking it. So in the same way, uh, and I've accepted now that, that that's me and that's my reality. In the same way, I don't know how to go out and play golf on the weekend, network, and connect with friends and, you know, party after. This is the only way I know how to play a sport. Yeah. And uh, like you said, there are many positives to it. There are many negatives to it as well. Because I could be doing so many other things today. But I'm still choosing to start a whole second innings. And it's not like I've tried for two years and I've stopped. I've, uh, uh, I'm at it for the last, you know, uh, yeah. 10, years. Eight eight years. Eight, 10 years. Uh, so I think that's why golf. And till I, I'm, uh, till I achieve what I believe that I know I'm capable of, I don't think I'm going to be stopping. No, I totally understand that, sir. And I sort of on some, on some level, I do relate to that as well because I've, I've been through similar things and it's been about 10 years since I stopped playing football professionally, so to speak. But uh, yes. even today, if I am going for a game with the kids around or whoever, the, my friends also. You're it's still mindful of your technique and your, the way you play. I, I do have a tendency to get fiercely competitive after a point and that slightly rubs people off the wrong and just relax. I don't know how to do that. I think that's who we are and I think yeah. that uh, you've got to... The, the only important thing is that you cannot let that break you. You know, and, and, and that is also another lesson I have learned from golf. That there have been days when... Because it's very hard to start, to start something right at the bottom when you're used to winning so much in the PG sport. But that's a challenge for me. But to do that, that's my biggest challenge. That can I do it all over again? Yeah. But at the same time, yeah. you have to always remember that you also play the sport because you enjoy it. You also play a sport because you want to be competitive and it gives you the, uh, the option to be competitive. True. So, True. so it's like, when I say it's like my second innings, I cannot ever forget that on my worst days at golf and only focus on just picking up that medal or that trophy. I have to also remember that, wow, eight years of my life I've spent doing something I love and all the other work that I do, whether it is television presenting or it is motivational speaking or it is creating content on social media, everything that I do is to support and fund this journey of golf. And I don't think I would be so inspired to do so much around golf if there wasn't a sport that needed funding, you know, so, so everything works out, uh, I think, eventually. For the best, if you if you got the right mindset and the right attitude and spirit for why you started what you did. True. So when when there are those bad days, so like even since a very young age, swimming then golf, there are there are bound to be bad days and there are bound to be more bad days than the great ones. Correct. Obviously, correct. 
Correct. What do you do to pick yourself back up after that one particularly bad day? Uh, I think um, first and foremost, I go back to uh, figuring out how I can better my process. So when I, uh, so for example, with swimming, uh, when I swam a bad race, uh, the first, the reason you cry and the reason you're angry is just purely your ego. Uh, and, and, and your ego takes a lot of time to accept that, okay, somebody is better than you. Somebody has done a better job and you have possibly failed at what you have tried to do. Um, but once your ego decides to go back to bed, it's when you have the time and the space to actually say, okay, what can I do better for the next time? And uh, uh, it's, it's the same with me. It's the same for swimming. It's the same for golf where initially, and, and, and I'm always, I've always been very emotional about my sport. Always. There's no, I feel like uh, the way I'm built, there's no balance. Honestly, it's either, there's always been extremes. That's why I live the life I live. So um, I don't think I do anything normally. And that's why with golf also, um, when I'm angry and I'm frustrated, it's not like an anger that is a two minute anger. It's like a six hour anger, sadness, disappointment, same in the pool. But once that is done, I will never miss the next day's practice. Okay. I will never let that overflow into, I'm not going tomorrow to hell with this sport. Yeah. That will never happen. In fact, I will, I, today wasn't a particularly good day. I've come home with a couple of frustrations from my sport, but I'm already thinking of how I can do my process better for tomorrow. Okay. And that's what I've always done through swimming as well. And I've always managed to do through golf. What the pattern that I found is because maybe I'm older, I'm a little more, maybe I'm a little more emotional now, or because I'm also a little more tired purely because of now I'm an athlete for 28 years and not yeah. 18. Um, I react a little more harshly okay. and, uh, but, but it's all internal and it takes time. But once, like I said, it, I managed to calm myself down and let go. Uh, it's back to how to, how do I do my process better? It's never, how do I get this target? No, it's never the result. Okay. It's always the result when I'm emotional. Why didn't I hit the score? Why didn't I hit the timing I wanted to? That's the results always bring out emotion, which are, I think, totally pointless for an athlete. Anything. But once that emotion is all out, and I would always advise young athletes, never hold it in. Let it all out. Be human. It's okay. Yeah. Once that is out, you have to, and your ego is basically put to bed. Then you come back to understanding what you did wrong or rather what you can do better for tomorrow. And that's pretty much in different ways because the whole law, uh, the, the framework of eat, uh, swimming and golf are, is different and how you prepare. But the, the foundation of thought is, the school of thought is the same. That is simply focus on your process, always bring it back to basics and process on your worst days. And, um, and, and we, like you said, we've all accepted that we're going to have many more bad days than good. So the other thing that I feel I didn't do, but I said in the beginning is important is that whatever you're doing, uh, or pursuing, there has to be love for it. There has to be, you have to cherish it. You have to appreciate it. Um, and then when you go back, it's there and that helps you go back to it quicker with a clearer frame of mind. When you talk about football today, uh, you talk about saying I wasn't able to do uh, maybe the Olympics or whatever else it is because of injuries. But today I still go out onto a ground and I'm competitive and I enjoy it. And even what you're doing right now, where you're talking to athletes and you're, you're in sport, it's because you enjoy sport. It's because you enjoy football. You haven't left football with so much. Of course, there may have been anger or disappointment at different points in your career. Yeah. But it, it can never be the, the thing that takes over from the love that you have for sport or the love that you have for football, which is why you're here doing what you do. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to be part of a, a world-class football team to love sport and to have a passion for it. You can do a hundred things around it. It doesn't mean that I have to go out and lift a major championship trophy in golf one day. If I do, great. But I my ability to come back to it yeah. after a bad day or after a challenge 
is better because there is love for it. I talked to you about the first day I hit a seven iron at golf. My eyes started watering, and uh, it it's not. And I've not even I've not lifted a single proper. I've lifted corporate trophies in golf, but not a single proper national trophy yeah. yet. But I'm already so attached to the sport. So on my bad days, ten years from now or five years from now, when I'm playing hopefully bigger tournaments, it is the same love that will keep me going, which is the answer to your question. No, I, I I totally agree with that, and I think this sentiment, if if it echoes throughout the country, then we would be in a much better place as a as a sporting nation. Yes, throughout this journey, throughout this this twenty eight thirty years journey. who are the people who have been the biggest support for you i think uh i think for me uh, with with swimming um uh, definitely all my coaches i mean every single coach that i interacted with whether it was in india or it was abroad i made it a point to learn something constructive and positive from therefore i think all my coaches definitely uh, my coach that helped me achieve my dream of becoming an olympian uh, pradeep kumar who is also the national coach yeah. definitely him before him there was another coach called nihar ami definitely him and several coaches in bombay so i think coaches without without te- without great teachers you can't be who you are uh, with swimming again my parents for sure uh, for for just being pillars you know just being pillars of strength uh, who told me okay you want to go to bangalore we'll go to bangalore you want to travel internationally and train we'll travel internationally and train you want to race here we'll race here there was never a no uh there was never i mean i went to my dad at one nationals i saw the i was 12 i was from bombay i went to him and i said look at these karnataka swimmers they are winning everything we went back home to bombay and i said dad i want to go to bangalore you know literally like i was telling him take me down the road yeah yeah and in one week we were in bangalore wow. we had moved and stayed in bangalore for 13 years you know so Amazing. there was never a no from them my mom she's she's been my housewife uh, she's been a homemaker she's just supported me her whole life has been dedicated to my first sport with golf my parents are a little more detached though i know they they want very badly for me what i want very badly yeah. for me basically but uh, they so my parents have been just always supportive and uh, with golf i think again my i know my parents are there it's their love that uh, you know makes us whole as kids but again my coaches in golf i have worked with uh, two two coaches in uh, dubai that have been great for me now i'm working with uh, a coach here in pune who is i believe is going to take me to the national some day and um, and uh, and and because i mentioned you know i mentioned work and a lot of work that i do that funds my golf yeah. uh, with golf yeah. it has to be my team my manager gitika who is you know basically again everybody that is close to me is is close to me with the same goals and dreams and want the same goals and dreams for me that i want for myself so again you know when it comes to um, when it comes to my talks i have another quote that i say i say surround yourself with the best and uh, this is something that i tell even kids in schools and colleges not only team leaders or hr i tell them that you have to make the effort to find people in your closest circle who will celebrate your success as happily as you celebrate yours now i know that that is almost practically impossible unless it's your parents because we are all human and we all have egos and we all will say oh why him why not me mm-hmm. so it's impossible to have that much joy for somebody else's success but if you make the effort to find that circle and surround yourself with people who you know that they will stand up and celebrate your trophy yeah almost yeah. as much as you celebrate your trophy that's the effort you have to make and that's the effort i have also made for myself whether it is my closest best friends or it is my team that helps me with my work or it is my coaches so uh, and and figuring out who wants the best for me who's doesn't 
you know so uh, and that's an effort that i think all of us should make because uh, sure you they say friends are there for you people your closest are there for you in your worst times but even in your good times it's important to have people that can genuinely celebrate your wins and uh, so i think my parents my coaches my manager and a couple of my best friends who uh, you know have just been there for me uh, solid have and it, they are both individual sports right the one is swimming one is golf but neither you can't achieve greatness at either if you don't have a team a solid team around you. Sure. and i've been lucky to have that with swimming i'm building it for golf when i get uh, better and greater at golf i'll have a bigger team of uh, more you know people around me hopefully but i'll i'll make sure i find a team that will always clap for me as hard as i am clapping for myself that i i hope the team gets bigger soon which obviously means so. which obviously means there is success <laughs> coming in um on a on a lighter note outside of sport we've, we've spoken a lot about sport and the intensity of it all outside of sport when you're not playing anything or you're not thinking about what the next day holds how are you distracting yourself or how are you just sitting back and relaxing for a bit okay so there are very few <laughs> minutes in the day when this actually happens because if you if i'm training i might literally my training day is say 8 to 1 or 8 to 2 then there's lunch and then there's 3 to 4 or 4 to 5 is gym uh, you know fitness and then you come home at about 5 or 6 uh, and then i'm having dinner at 8 so it's basically 5 to 10 or 6 yeah. to 10 so part of it is uh, dedicated to watching something online because we all watch something online to just uh, shut off from yeah. the craziness of sport but um, uh, apart from that i think i've over over the lockdown last year uh, also because of lack of not being able to really do anything yeah. i uh, i uh, i've always loved uh, uh, time keeping and watches yeah. so um, i made a huge effort to to study and learn i signed up on a couple of for a couple of lessons as well and learn about what goes into uh, watch making and um and i've got a it's a beautiful hobby i think and uh, that's something that i pursued i also because i have a travel blog and i do a lot of travel writing i started a separate section on watches and i wrote i think 20 or 25 odd watch blogs on different you know watches and technology that goes into it so basically i just uh, found a hobby that i always knew i love but i found finally found the time to pursue so um you know horology as it is called yeah. is is a big is also a big part of not a big part but it's a special part of my day when i want to uh you know switch off from golf uh, and um, and again it's because sport is something that we love doing i love watching sport uh, mostly formula 1 i enjoy for, uh, watching formula 1 so it's practice i mostly forget that friday practice is happening but it's qualifying on saturday and sunday yeah. Grand Prix. I look forward forward to those weekends, and when Federer plays, it's tennis. Otherwise, it's not <laughs> only when Federer. From reading so Federer. I, yeah, it's Team Federer and music. Music from time to time. Uh, but again, music is while I train. I don't really listen to. Okay. I'd love to be the sort of guy who listens to music to relax, but uh, it's generally music is around my training. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that counts. And with travel, I think the last. Of course, my work is my work. which we won't get into but with travel it's nice because uh, it takes me away from the madness of sport um and and it's a new experience uh, purely because i may have even visited a lot of these places that i have gone to in the last 5 uh, or 6 years but uh, when i went to them before it was with stress it was with the pressure yeah. of competition and not being able to enjoy the city for what it had to offer it was go to the city find the swimming pool race win or lose and come back, come back. but now it is go to the city do nothing the first day have a coffee at the second day watch people doing nothing and just you know then you work also because you are there to work and you do stuff for the properties and the destinations but but it's a nicer form of travel yeah. not nicer but different form of travel so i think between all these uh, little little hobbies that i have i managed to fit them in into the <laughs> the few hours or minutes yeah. that i get in my uh, in in my day but it's it's nice i think we are very lucky to to you also you and me uh, people like us are very lucky to have the time to be able to pursue our passions 
and if this is what you're doing today it makes you happy it, it's a passion of yours you said it's a passion project my sport is my passion project the, the, to have the luxury of not only doing one but choosing to do two sports yeah. i think is also a huge blessing and uh, you know when i when i um, when i behave badly and i i throw a tantrum at the golf course and i'm angry in varia please my coach or my dad will say stop being a brat <laughs> you know stop being a brat you've got golf clubs in your you've got membership to a golf club you've got golf clubs you should be grateful and lucky that you're able to do this and i truly am but like i said uh, my excuse is that i'm very angry and emotional when i when my ego <laughs> takes over yeah uh, yeah and i think i've taken up a lot of your time they just one fine no, it's fine no problem you you work a lot with uh, younger generation the younger athletes and all of these people correct what is your one piece of advice like out of all the world of wisdom that we have already spoken about one piece correct. of advice that is extremely crucial for anybody to make it in the current climate i think that it's important that you said taking into account everything else that we have said if you if you get your training right if everything all the little lessons that i try to throw in there through our uh, our talk if you can do all that then what what's remaining is is uh, is that you have to have i think the patience you have to be patient and more than patience with your goals but you have to be patient with yourself and kinder to yourself i think yeah and when i say be kinder to yourself i am not telling youngsters to waste their time and to eat junk and to be rude to their parents and to and their coaches and you know i'm not saying that i'm saying you do everything that we have discussed over this last couple of minutes yeah and once all that is done if you can do all the things we said and you do them well if you still are not getting to your goals as quickly as you feel you should then you need to be more patient and you need to be kinder to yourself i and and again it's because we have spoken about yeah. so many things that are needed to be a great athlete is why i'm telling you that if you are able to cover all those yeah. then you're pretty yeah. much doing everything that is humanly possible and you're being the best you can be yeah after you've done all that if you you don't see that dream or that goal come to a reality it's okay it's okay because that's the best you can do but if you're not patient and you're not kind to yourself you never know if that can happen 3 or 4 years down the line so for example in two, and I'll end with this because i i always like to end my talk on a high point uh that if you if in 2004 when i failed to qualify for the athens olympics i um, i was so dejected i told my dad we were in malaysia i went to the hotel room i chucked my swim bag on the side and i said i never want to swim again i told him i don't want to see your swimming pool again i don't want to talk about swimming again and i even told him that this wasn't even my immediate dream i'm 16 i uh, i'm a national champion and i really you know was angry and emotional and i said i'm a national champion and all over the press when i am at nationals uh, i enjoy the attention of you know friends fans and everything that a 16 year old teenager yeah. would enjoy and i worked very hard to get there and this wasn't my immediate dream it was made my dream and i failed at it and now i hate the sport so i want to stop and about a week later i i really questioned why i swam and uh, uh, why i love the sport and i told myself that i've got to be patient and i will give myself time and i gave myself time and 4 years later um i was one of suggest 62 uh, indians and uh, we had i think now we are at 1.2 or 1.3 billion i think we were at 1 or 1.1 billion people yeah. and i was good enough you know to stand um, at the opening ceremony of the beijing olympics and uh, we were all there 62 of us and you you're waiting in that little corridor uh, at, at the stadium and all you can see 10 yards in front of you is uh, the national flag mm. and uh, when when your country's name is called out we walk out onto that olympic stadium and you do a lap of that 
you know the beijing uh, athletics uh, arena and it is by far the greatest uh, feeling ever and uh, a week later i raced the 200 meter butterfly my parents were there to watch me my coach of course was there and most uh, amazingly though this is a team sport i had um, 200 kids from my swim team back in bangalore all sitting in front of a big flat screen tv okay watching me race okay. so i was so lucky that while i was an individual there i got to celebrate my greatest moment with so many people and so many kids who are today champions you know so uh, i'm not going to say who but there was another athlete who who did fantastically uh, and I'm, if i say talk about the sport you'll know but uh, he did well i congratulated his mom and his mom sent me a little and i'm not making this up it's the truth she, she sent me a little picture and she said rehan you came to our uh, arena uh, 10 years ago and you signed my son's autograph okay. and uh, he has competed at this olympics in you know so um so and and she said you were his one of his first inspirations he stood in line for your autograph and he took it he was i think 10 when i was 22 so and had just come back from beijing because i used to do a lot of these school events yeah. uh, so so i'm just the reason i'm talking about these moments is that if i had not had the patience to stay the journey and stay the course none of this would be mine Yeah. and so for you know kids listening uh be patient be kind and i'm not saying that it's going to end by you becoming an olympian and a star in your sport it true. but but who says that that is true success who defines that a, a medal on your stand is true success after 27 now 28 years in sport i believe that your happiness is Yes sure it's your your super super happy when you achieve your goals but that is not sustainable happiness you cannot sustain that happiness you work we work a year to race three times and win three national medals yes. and break the national records but we also work a year so that's still 362 days of the year where we have no, no medals sure. but if we can have true joy and true peace of mind and satisfaction of just pursuing a sport and being the best you can be at it that is success and happiness for me so when you say what is the message you give be patient be kind to yourself and lastly your definition of success should be what i just mentioned be the best you can possibly be and find happiness in its in its pursuit that that's that's a really positive note for us to end this chat on i feel i think there is whoever watches it out there i hope a lot of young athletes watch this one because there's a lot to learn from your journey from the things you spoke about thank, thank you, you so much sir thank you so much for being here and uh, i hope we can do it again sometime soon likewise thank you sir thank you